you saying Black Lives Matter as a white person or as a Latino person or as an Asian person is wonderful. But if you're not changing our economic position, it's really not doing nothing for us. I mean, I'm just being honest about the situation. I love the fact that all these people are saying something because it reminds me, and see, we, we got to understand history. This literally happened before in history. It was before you were born. It was before I was born. You know, to be honest mm-hmm. with you, it happened during the Civil Rights Movement. People in the North didn't understand how bad it was until they saw the water holes and the dog on video. They didn't understand how bad it was until they saw Bloody Sunday in Selma. So what happened with George Floyd made people say, oh, my God, this is ridiculous. we got to do something about it. Now, I'm proud of all of our brothers and sisters, no matter what nationality they may be, speaking up and fighting on our behalf. But until we change our economic position, it does nothing for us. Because if, if we just say we're satisfied with them saying Black Lives Matter, we're satisfied with people marching in the street, then a year from now, we still got the poverty in our community. We still got the worst public schools in our community. We still have the highest unemployment in America. We still are the ones getting arrested at a rate nobody else is getting arrested at. So until our black and brown brothers and sisters' economic position change, and see, I'm saying this from somebody who is black and Puerto Rican. I'm saying this from both sides. If you, if you don't have economic development in Puerto Rico, in Cuba, in Haiti, in, in, in America, for black and brown people, we will be right back here. What is the meaning, Warren? We're talking with Warren Ballantyne, talk show host, activist, and attorney uh, here on the Jeff Fox Show. What is the meaning of defund the police? Because a lot of people think defund the police means get rid of them, and that's not what it is, correct? No, it, it has nothing to do with that. In fact, we, we have a history of that, too. If you look in 2000, the city of Compton defunded the police. If you look in 2013, even in New Jersey, one of the cities there defunded the police. What happens is the county now becomes the police. So if you live in Wade County and they defund the police department, then Wade County sheriffs would be the police. So defunding the police department isn't about getting rid of the cops. It's about changing who's policing and how they're policing. Because you want to set it up in a way where the community is involved. See, when I was growing up in mm-hmm. Chicago, we had all these different programs that the police were doing in the community. Now, one of the things that I've been saying for at least the, the last five years, maybe even 10 years on the radio, is people need to live where they police. Because if you live in the community that you police in, you know who the real drug dealers are. You know who the real gangsters are. And you know who's just hanging out with their cousin on the corner. Mm-hmm. And that makes all the difference in the world because even if you look at what happened in the lab, Rashad Brooks was shot in the back, not because he was a bad guy, not because he was doing something wrong, but because he was on probation and he knew if they locked him up again, he was going away again to, to, to the industrial prison system. And the best example I can give you is Meek Mill. This is why everybody was upset about Meek Mill's case, because he wasn't doing nothing but riding a three-wheel in the, in, in, in the street. And a black judge literally violated his probation and put him back in prison. People shouldn't have to go back to prison once they've already served their time. And this is why I've been yelling since all this started. The way we fix this, the way we get economic development is nonviolent offenders should be able to erase their records. One time, one time only. You don't want the habitual criminal to be able to keep doing it, but somebody who got a charge at 19 or 20, and now they're 30 and they're married with kids, that scarlet letter A shouldn't follow them for the rest of their life. They should be able to erase that record so they can go get a good government job with benefits, with insurance, so they don't have to work three, four, five, six jobs. And see, America, let me say this to y'all. If if you allow people to be able to work one job, their kids come out differently. And I'm going to tell you why because they have more time to invest in them, more time to raise them, more time to educate them, and more time to teach them to be good human beings. If they're working three, four jobs a day, they're home with their kids, maybe an hour, two hours at the most. That's the problem. 
Mm. Powerful words, man. It's the Truth Fighter, Warren Valentine, on the Jeff Fox Show. This question I really wanted to hear your thoughts on, which is something we talked about on the show the other day. Reparations, pipe dream, or is this a distinct possibility for African Americans? Well, we're going to make the argument for reparations. This is, a, this is what I would tell anybody to do as far as the reparations argument. Don't even argue it to the federal government. Mm. Don't, don't argue it to them. Argue it to the insurance company that didn't pay the $2.7 million to the descendants of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Argue it to Harvard, whose endowment in school was built by slaves. Argue it to Yale and Columbia and Princeton, all these Ivy League schools which were built by slaves who literally got their endowments because they insured the slaves and the slaves that died in the process of building these great universities Literally, when they die, they get hundreds of thousands of dollars. Let's argue it to the people who made money off the backs of black people, whether it was free labor or through death and insurance policies. But let's argue it to them first and to these corporations first and then get them to do something. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. It, it, it should literally be where every African-American student who qualifies to get into a Ivy League school should be able to go on a full ride, don't have to come out their pocket because their descendants have already done enough for that school. Wow. That's exactly what I was hoping to hear, man, because I agree with you a thousand percent uh, on that as well, man. It's Warren Valentine. Hey, where, where can folks catch up with you, man? Man, you can follow me on um, Twitter, the Verde. Or Truth Fighter 1, you can follow me on Instagram, Truth Fighter, or just Warren Valentine on Facebook and all this other stuff. Uh, and then, you know, I'm on, I do a bunch of people's shows, plus my own show that I do nationally uh, every day uh, between 11 and 12 on 